In the ever-evolving world of first-person shooters, few games manage to leave a lasting legacy. Titanfall 2, a game that launched back in 2016, has defied the odds, has left that legacy, and is doing really well right now here in 2024. How did this underdog not only stand that test of time, but also become a must-play FPS game for an entire generation? The game has been on sale for $3 for a while now, and that has boosted the population numbers back up again on all platforms. Plus, some popular streamers have been playing the game again, and that really has breathed some life back into the population. This is the time you want to play. These little moments don't last long, and when there's a variety of skill levels going into matches, it's a ton more fun to play. Rewind to the game's initial release date. Amid a very crowded market, dominated by blockbuster franchises like COD and Battlefield, Titanfall 2 dropped right into the middle of those with a promise, trying to revolutionize the FPS genre with innovative mechanics. You had a great single player, you had a very fun multiplayer, and it was already on day one. What set Titanfall 2 apart were the core mechanics, obviously the Titans, the big towering mechs. They gave a unique twist on combat. While on pilot gameplay, you can run on walls, leap across the battlefield, the movement tech is what keeps players coming back to this game. In the Titan phase, you're looking at something similar to Smite or League of Legends, where it's very matchup focused and you need to understand your kit in order to do well. You combine this with a great single player campaign that was heartfelt, great design, unique mechanics, and it set a standard for what FPS players have wanted for a long time. And it was all there, like I said, on day one. You would think with all of this, the game would have record population numbers and nothing but a great storyline, and it doesn't. Titanfall 2 never was able to retain the player base and the big population numbers I think a lot of people think it deserved. There's been a ton of discussion over the years. Was it down to the fact that it released in between Battlefield 1 and Infinite Warfare? I don't really know. I, I don't think so because I've covered Titanfall 2 since the very beginning. I love this game. And about every three to four months, there'll be a sale or a big video or something that reignites the flame for Titanfall 2. The population numbers jump up but it never is able to hold those higher numbers. Simply put, the game, I think, has a challenging barrier of entry. You have to learn a lot. There's a lot going on. And if you're going against the people who have played for a long time, it can be very frustrating. But if you stick with it, if you put in the work to learn about slide hopping and some of the movement tech in this game, how to fire using hip fire instead of ADSing the right kits, it is extremely rewarding, and it's the reason I still love booting up this game and playing it to this day. It's kind of what makes Titanfall 2 so special. It has everything going for it on paper, yet it never was really able to sustain. Not in the way that Apex Legends did. We learned recently from Muhammad Alavi about the story of how Titanfall 3 ultimately turned into Apex Legends. I'll leave a link in the description to the full story, but essentially the TLDR is that Apex was just stickier. And when they were doing the playtests internally at the studio, more people were drawn to playing Apex than the Titanfall 3 prototype that they were working on. And I don't know about you when you started gaming or what your favorite FPS games are, but I really do miss this model of a great single player game, a great multiplayer, and it's all available on launch. It seems like in the live service and free to play era, that just is not going to happen anymore. You're either going to get the whole game broken up into bite-sized pieces and sold back to you later, but the idea of spending that $60, $70 on the complete package ready to go on day one is sort of foreign these days. Now there's pros and cons to everything. Live service can bring in some benefits, but I really, really wish and hope that we'll see something like Titanfall 2 once again. For those who are curious about right now, you can play Titanfall 2 on all platforms. The DDoSing has been addressed and Respawn has gone back in and fixed the matchmaking. This all happened about last August. When that did, big resurgence, people came back, super fun, and then it sort of died down around Christmas time. We're now getting some decent numbers once again, and this is, like I said, a great time to play the game. Try out lots of different weapons, lots of different kits, learn about the movement system, and do yourself a favor. If you really wanna get the most out of this game, start learning about the slide hop mechanic. You can go into custom games and practice this thing for hours and hours, and it honestly never gets old. That is why I'm drawn to Titanfall 2. Yeah, the gunplay is super fun, the Titan mechanic is great, but the movement, it's kinda like Mirror's Edge or Tony Hawk. 
Every single match is an opportunity for you to flow and fly through the level, trying not to bonk or drop your inputs or hold down that nice slow bunny hop strafe. It's not the type of game that I can just go play attrition for three or four hours at a time. It does get old to me. Ultimately, I'm just really happy that Titanfall 2 is playable again, and the fact that you don't need Northstar in order to play it. Northstar is this custom launcher that was made by the community that allows you to play these great custom games, like three Titan attrition and gun games, sticks and stones, all sorts of really cool things that people have made. So it is still playable and still quite awesome, but for the majority of players, especially the console side, being able to play the game is awesome. I'm really passionate about encouraging players to play games like this while they are still around, while there's still enough people to experience it, because there will come a day where the population isn't high enough to find a match or the servers are down. I've seen it happen with games in the past that I've enjoyed. Lawbreakers, Nexus, even Titanfall 1 is very hard to play. Now, as far as Titanfall 3 goes, man, the rumor mill for this has been going for years. Doesn't sound like it's happening. About a month ago, it was rumored that Steve Fukuda over at Respawn is working on something in the Titanfall universe. But Jeff Grubb of Giant Bomb, who reported on this, made it clear that it is not Titanfall 3. It's not a game with online multiplayer and a single player campaign. So then what could it be? Titanfall Legends was this rumored campaign that brought our Apex characters into the Titanfall universe. It really doesn't make a ton of sense to me why Respawn wouldn't pursue something single player that they could promote in the Apex launcher. And there are so many people now in the Apex universe who would enjoy a well-crafted Respawn style single player game. But also you gotta look at the point the industry is at right now. EA has laid off a ton of people, and that sucks. The industry is going very risk averse. They're not into taking chances, and a Titanfall 3 most likely is viewed as a risk at this point. I'm keeping a little hope alive that we will play something new in the Titanfall universe in our lifetime, but I'm kind of over the rumors and the speculation. I truly thought at the Game Awards this last year we were going to hear or see something Titanfall related. In terms of Apex support, they've been talking about it wanting it to be a 20-year experience similar to Counter-Strike. I mean, that statement was made last year. I don't know if the numbers have changed since then, but I do know from EA's latest release, like their investor earnings call, they're doubling down on live service. I don't see Respawn changing course anytime soon. I don't know if Apex can last 20 years, maybe, uh, but it, that seems to be where the game plan is right now. What's your Titanfall 2 story? Were you there at the beginning or have you just discovered the game? Share your experience in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. If you enjoyed this dive into the world of Titanfall, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoy this kind of content. Until next time, see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.